1971, when I was thinking about changing careers, I went to UCLA to study photography. And I studied with a very influential photographer teacher named Robert Heineken. Robert Heineken was a wonderful uh, artist using photography in his art. And he was pushing the boundaries of photography, trying to find ways of, of, um, of doing interesting work using photography as a, as, a, as a tool, as a medium. And he taught very strongly on the subject of theme. What is the concept? What is your theme when you're shooting pictures? Why are you shooting pictures? Why do you pick up your camera and photograph something? We do for a lot of reasons. Some of us shoot pictures because we want a, a memory of a birthday party or an anniversary. Some of us shoot pictures because we want to show people where we've been. Here's a picture of me with the, at the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Um, memories, commemorations, and so forth. We are talking tonight, or I'm talking tonight, about what happened to me when Robert Heineken taught this class, and I began to understand that photography could be a very personal instrument of expression. And to show you how rigid he was about working concept, he said, if you're walking down the street and you have your camera in your hand ready and loaded, ready to shoot, and you see a body falling, someone has either fallen or jumped out of a very high window, you could shoot that picture. But you don't do it unless the work that you're doing at the time has to do with the effect of space on the human body. <laughs> If you just shoot it because it's happening, that's photojournalism. If you're a photojournalist, fine. Fine. But understand that there's that difference. There is photojournalism of the event, and there's a study thematically of the space and the figure. So <laughs> I kind of took it seriously, and I thought, okay, I have to try to find my voice. I have to try to find out why I'm shooting pictures <clears throat> and what I'm shooting pictures of and not be carrying cameras around the way I have been for so many years. There is a sculpture in the, uh, in the Borghese Gardens in, in Rome. Uh, it is a, a sculpture done by a, a wonderful artist named Canova. It's in marble. It's exquisite. This is what it, what it looks like. <clears throat> it's, it's on permanent display there. And thousands and thousands of people have visited this sculpture. And I heard about it, and I wanted, I wanted to do a study about it. Uh, because the, the story of the sculpture intrigued me. The model was Paulina Bonaparte Borghese. She was Napoleon Bonaparte's sister, and she was married to Count Borghese. I think she was ahead of her time. She wanted to be photographed like this, semi-nude, as Venus. And she approached Canova, the sculptor, and told him what she had in mind. And he was concerned because he was a very successful and very good sculptor. And he knew there would be scandalous to portray her semi-nude this way, a countess being portrayed semi-nude. He finally agreed to do it. He created this gorgeous piece of work. And when it was done, her husband, the count, was embarrassed that his wife had posed this way for this, for this sculpture. So he locked up the sculpture and only allowed private, limited private viewings of it. The legend was that when he was out of town, the servants could be bribed if you wanted to see the, the sculpture. <clears throat> I was intrigued with that story. So I established a studio at the American Academy in Rome. I went there for a residency. And I did a, a series of photographs based on that story, not just the sculpture, but the story. And this was one of the images that I, that I ended up with. The shape is the same, essentially. The apple is there, but she's shrouded. It's the secrecy of the piece that intrigued me. And this was kind of the keystone image that grew out of that. And then eventually, something a little bit more romantic, we arrived at this. This was done here in Los Angeles. And uh, the model very patiently stood for being painted white. Uh, it was shot with colored film. And the only color, obviously, was the apple. So it's not treated, it's not photoshopped in any way. She was painted white, we made a wig for her, and uh, gave her the red apple to work with. Her. 